I am Shanna Combley. I am the stakeholder engagement lead for this newly established US Greenhouse Gas Center um, from NASA headquarters. I am pleased to welcome those of you in the room and those of you online um, to our forum. This meeting will be recorded and our note takers, our contract support, and our interns will be preparing a report for us to learn what we, um, to document what we have learned today. And you'll get that in a few weeks. Um, before we begin, I have a health and safety statement. If anyone has concerns during the meeting regarding issues of harassment or inappropriate comments or any other health and safety in, uh, matter, please inform Aries Keck. Um, Aries, please here. Um, she's in the room. And her telephone number is available 202-604-2356 in case you do need to get a hold of her. I also want to point out that we have some exits um, that you need to be aware of, emergency exits there, the way you came in past the, um, the restrooms. And that's how you get out in case of an emergency. But yep, now that we've gone through that, I would like to uh, introduce um, our speakers. Um, I'll do a quick run through of the agenda and then um, let you know how the day will go and have our speakers come up. So first, we will preview. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. We'll start with the opening remarks from our agency partners, um, followed by an introduction to the, the center. Then we will present three different examples of our focus areas or topics that are the, the initial pilot and for this beta portal of or beta phase of the forum and for this for the center. And finally, we'll hear about the national strategy to advance an integrated US greenhouse gas measurement, monitoring, and information system, which is also what the US Greenhouse Gas Center is a part of. Okay, now first I would like to have Miss Grace Hugh from the Office of the um, Executive uh, Branch can come on up. She's from OMB. So I'm quite shorter than Jana. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first ever Greenhouse Gas Center Forum. I'm excited to welcome you here today. And thank you, thank you, thank you for traveling in this cold weather to be with us in TC today. So my office, uh, Office of Management and Budget, it's part of the Executive Office of the President. And we have a role in supporting interagency coordination and helping the President implement his or her vision across executive branch. For the past year, I, along with my colleagues in the Office of Science and Technology Policy and the Climate Policy Office, have seen this Greenhouse Gas Center evolve from a concept on a piece of paper to creation of an interagency team, and most recently, development of an initial data portal that synthesizes and provides access to greenhouse gas information in a way that we hope will be more accessible and valuable to users inside and outside of government. As someone who's been involved with this endeavor from the start, I'd like to provide some context on what you will hear about today. First, given the urgency of addressing the climate crisis, we encourage the agencies to build out the center in an iterative fashion, a phased approach, rather than spending a whole year on paper plans and agreements before developing something. That meant starting with a few agencies and a few use cases that build upon our existing agency capabilities, and then using this initial work phase to establish best practices for working across multiple agencies, multiple entities to integrate data sets and modeling capabilities. Second, we recognize that significant data and capabilities exist outside the four agencies involved with the center and outside of government, including some provided by your organizations. So while the initial work you see today is largely based on federal government capabilities, it is the intent of the Greenhouse Gas Center to leverage non-US government data and capabilities. The center is just beginning to explore partner areas where partnerships can aid in the full implementation of the center's capabilities and future use cases. And third, many of the capabilities you see today began as research endeavors. This effort aims to facilitate transition of mature capabilities developed under a research paradigm to sustained use to improve integration and dissemination of greenhouse gas information. So what you're gonna see today is a starting point to build upon in collaboration with you and other government and non-governmental stakeholders. This center is part of a broader administration effort on enhancing greenhouse gas information that will be discussed later today. 
And lastly, on behalf of the Executive Office of the President Offices, I want to express gratitude to NASA, NIST, No One, EPA, uh, Karen, Sharon, James, and Sarah. We really appreciate your team's work on the center and the broader greenhouse gas effort. I feel like we've been on this journey together, uh, with some of you in this room, and uh, I'm super excited about what you're going to see today. And now I'll turn it over to Karen St. Germain from NASA. Thanks. All right, well, let me uh, add my thanks to Grace's thank you all for coming today um, to the greenhouse gas, uh, the very first greenhouse gas state uh, center stakeholder forum. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity for us to actually gather here in person um, and as well as welcoming our folks online. Today is a really important milestone in our collaboration to better understand how our planet's climate is changing and what is driving the change. NASA is honored to have a role in this effort, and I'm proud to be here as the director of NASA's Earth Science Division. Um, I'd like to recognize our Greenhouse Gas Center Manager, uh, Dr. Argio Cavada, and uh, you already met the Greenhouse Gas Center uh, Stakeholder Engagement Lead, uh, Ms. Shanna Conley. Argy and Shanna work with uh, a NASA GHG Center team from across the agency, from multiple centers, uh, JPL, Goddard, and Marshall. Uh, to get where we, are, uh, where we are today, the NASA team has worked diligently also with our sister agencies, uh, represented uh, here on stage this morning, EPA, NOAA, and NIST. In many ways, for us, this moment epitomizes an example of a new strategy that we are implementing at NASA that we call Earth Science to Action. This strategy leverages NASA's uh, unique end-to-end -end capabilities to deliver science that is both informative and actionable. We start with technological innovation, move on to spaceflight uh, and observations, to greater scientific understanding, to modeling tools and applications, and the idea is to enable action. So one hallmark of this strategy is user-centric approaches. We focus our work on user needs and engaging in active conversation with stakeholders as we are working on that action portion of the portfolio. Uh, and that's, of course, what we're all here today to do. A second hallmark of our strategy is uh, fundamentally collaborative partnerships. We actively partner with other federal agencies, the private sector, international counterparts um, in co-developing solutions where appropriate. These partnerships, of course, must be seamless for those trying to use the information and the products. So my fellow speakers here this morning uh, represent partnerships that are currently central to the GHG Center. And of course, as Grace mentioned, that uh, set of partnerships will expand and deepen. NASA's contribution to this multi-agency effort brings decades of greenhouse gas measurements, uh, and these include uh, Earth Mineral Dust Source Investigation, or EMIT, those observations from EMIT, which is an instrument on the International Space Station. Initially, it was designed to uh, measure, to observe Earth minerals, uh, to inform our understanding of mineral dust, but we learned very shortly uh, after we launched it that it could also see methane plumes. So we bring also long-term investments in the carbon monitoring system. Uh, Grace mentioned, you know, the part of what, uh, what goes into the Greenhouse Gas Center is uh, originated with research. We bring open source science principles that the GHG Center will follow, making data, algorithms, and other underlying information fully available and the whole point there is to accelerate the capabilities and the understanding. The people of NASA's Earth Science Division are committed to this mission. We're committed to working with our partners uh, here today and across the federal government and the private sector and international partners to advance the capabilities of the center. And we're committed to working with you, our stakeholders, uh, to provide critical and timely scientific information the more earth science is used to inform decisions, the better those decisions become. And everyone in this room knows 
that there's a, an enormous difference between the best possible outcomes ahead of us and the worst possible outcomes ahead of us. So creating this GHG center puts earth science in the hands of those who need it so we can together drive toward the best outcomes ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for those kind words. Um, next, I'd like to bring up uh, Ms. Sharon Lee from EPA. She's the director of the Climate Change Division. Please. Quite as tall as Shane either. Good morning, everyone. It's so great to be here and to be amongst our partners in um, this this center. Uh, it's been an exciting year. Um, uh, my team at the Climate Change Division at EPA is responsible for measuring and monitoring greenhouse gas emissions and reporting those emissions on behalf of the United States under the UNFCCC. Um, we've been doing that for over 30 years, and I can honestly say this is probably the most excited anyone has ever been at any point in time about measuring emissions. So thank you for joining us on our mission. And, um, and it's great to see so many agencies and so many brilliant people thinking about this really, really, really important question. Um, it's been really exciting for my team and I to learn more about everyone's capabilities, to take advantage of the strengths that all of these different agencies bring to this very important question. Um, you know, now more than ever, it's so important to accurately measure um, and quantify emissions because we cannot mitigate what we cannot count. So um, we all have very different uh, tech technologies and capabilities. And at the end of the day, you know, the numbers that we report to the UNFCCC are so important for the United States. And so the what um, companies also report to us under the greenhouse gas reporting program for large emitters. Um, and being able to quantify with accuracy um, and transparency is so important. So those are all the capabilities that we're excited that this group brings to the table. And we are so excited to be part of this group. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon Lee. And now we have James Whetstone from the National Institute for Standards and Technology. Thank you, Shanna. Uh, good morning. Pleasure to be here. I want to say a few words about uh, NIST and, and the GHG MMIS. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, I want to stress is that NIST is the Measurements and Standards Institute of the, of the United States, and we look forward to working with uh, others here and uh, in the private sector to address measurement challenges and fully uh, and for a fully developed on operational GGA, GHG MMIS. I'll get that acronym right at one point or another. <clears throat> so uh, I wanted to stress the the need of the uh, the actually the role of the private sector as an important part of the center's uh, activities. Uh, NIST has had a long history of working with the private sector, and we certainly look forward to uh, working with the center and the private sector in trying to strengthen those ties and, and points of uh, cooperation, as uh, I think that for the most part, it will be the private sector that are actually the implementers of uh, uh, mitigation activities and the users of much of the uh, uh, information that, come, that the center uh, develops in addition to being providers of, of that information. And so there's, there'll be some need, I think, at some point to figure out how to make that nexus work. Uh, within commerce, uh, both NIST and NOAA work closely together uh, in these particular activities. You'll hear some more about that today. Uh, oh, some things, other things, not so much. Um, uh, one of the things I want to stress is that, that NIST and I think other federal agencies uh, look forward to providing data to the center as that data becomes publicly available, essentially, as, uh, as we publish that data. And in closing, uh, I would just look forward to the uh, successful operation of the center, uh, developing one of the components associated with moving the GHG MMI, MMIS, almost got it that time, uh, toward an operational capability for, to uh, 
so actually support the informational needs that uh, the private sector and, and, and the governmental sector will need in order to move forward toward a uh, uh, reduction targets that, that are before us. So lastly, I look forward to the uh, discussions today. I'm sure there will be lots of information exchanged and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, James. And lastly, but definitely not least, let's bring it back to Sarah Kapnick from the from NOAA. <clears throat> Thank you for the kind invitation to participate in this event alongside my esteemed colleagues from the White House, other federal agencies, and stakeholders across the enterprise involved in greenhouse gas monitoring. As NOAA Chief Scientist, I am responsible for advancing the policy and program direction for all of NOAA's science and technology priorities, including setting the direction of greenhouse gas activities. As a climate scientist by training, I understand the, the importance and value of having accurate and timely observations of greenhouse gases, which is why I'm excited to be here today. NOAA provides authoritative climate information and services to understand and address climate change. This crucially includes understanding the changing baseline of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere, as well as their sources and sinks within natural systems and emissions from human related activities at a wide range of scales from urban all the way to global scale. NOAA brings more than 50 years of experience and investments in unique and diverse capabilities for long term monitoring greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and the ocean and is a leading international authority on atmospheric and oceanic in situ to greenhouse gas measurements and research. Our observational networks range from global to regional to local and include ground-based, tower-based, airborne and satellite measurements of atmospheric greenhouse gases, as well as surface and deep ocean carbon measurements from ships, buoys, and other autonomous platforms. I would like to take a brief moment to acknowledge one of the leaders in greenhouse gas monitoring that passed away over the weekend. Dr. Jim Butler was the director of NOAA's Global Monitoring Lab for over a decade and helped to establish the U.S. as a global leader in greenhouse gas monitoring. I cannot think of a better way to honor his legacy than by acknowledging his contributions in getting us to where we are today and noting the role the center will play in continuing to advance U.S. leadership in global monitoring. NOAA has been working with other agencies on a national strategy to measure, monitor, and share information to help track the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. The development of this U.S. Greenhouse Gas Center is an important milestone in that work that will improve the coordination and dissemination of this critical information and enhance stakeholder engagement, which is part of the reason we are all here today. This national center strategy and center build upon the strong foundation of existing U.S. government efforts related to greenhouse gas measurements, monitoring, and the provision of data. NOAA will commit its long-standing world-class capabilities in greenhouse gas observations, modeling, and data delivery, including the Global Greenhouse Gas Reference Network, Carbon Tracker, High Split Dispersion Model, and Satellite Remote Sensing. Today, will you will hear how all the teams from experts from NASA, EPA, NIST, and NOAA are collaborating around an initial set of demonstration areas as a model for future coordination across federal and non-federal, domestic and international entities and commercial providers. I want to join my colleagues in welcoming all of you to this event and look forward to the active discussion. Thank you very much. And yes, it's a sad affair of the passing of Dr. Butler, um, well missed in the community. Now, before I turn over the stage to the next speaker, there'll just be a couple of logistical items. Um, throughout the meeting, we'll be using Mentimeter, a tool where you can ask questions to the speakers, you can vote the existing questions up, and you can um, help us to prioritize what questions are asked and, and, and addressed during the discussion sessions. Um, we'll also have some questions available for polling. The information for accessing Mentimeter will be shown on the screen. You can bring up your computer, your, your, your iPhones and, and Android phones and uh, be able to get access there. And I urge you to keep that page open throughout the day um, to react to the questions that are posted. Um, at the bottom of the screen on your Mentimeter, there'll be a section that says open Q&A. That's where you can ask your questions and see the remaining questions that are there. Um, the polling prompts will change throughout the meeting, so please answer those when you see one. 
Okay, now, uh, and apologies to for the folks online. I know there are a few technical issues that are being addressed. Um, they're trying to work that right now. Next, we'll hear from the, the manager of the U.S. Greenhouse Gas Center, Dr. Archie Cavada. Okay, good morning, everyone. Really excited to be here today and uh, see many of you here in person. I hope we can uh, address the issues online and, and get uh, everybody to be able to participate in that way as well. So as uh, Shana mentioned, um, I will be providing an overview of uh, what the U.S. Greenhouse Gas Center is today and, and some of the areas we're looking to, to develop and grow further as we are uh, spearheading this effort with our partner agencies. I do want to recognize that the presentation you'll see today um, incorporates inputs from our interagency implementation team, what we call the technical expert group, and you have uh, our colleagues here in the room today, so I will urge you to also reach out to them in addition to myself and Shana uh, during breaks and, and later in uh, during the process today. So let's go to the next slide. It's just an overview of today's presentation. Um, so if we move to the next slide, please, um, you can see so briefly discuss the motivation for prototyping the center and, and Grace already and, and uh, uh, senior leaders from the four agencies have already provided uh, great context for this. We will discuss briefly examples of uh, agency capabilities that are being used as a foundation to help prototype the center. Uh, talk about the vision, mission and goals of the center as of today and, and briefly address these uh, uh, initial use cases we're using to um, initially prototype the center and you'll hear more from the different teams uh, of uh, subject matter experts working in each one of those areas from the four agencies uh, later today. And we'll also have some brief uh, remarks on our stakeholder engagement uh, current and also uh, how we're looking to, to further this moving forward. Let's go to the next slide. So starting from the motivation for prototyping the center, so really a recognition that there is a need for a whole of society approach that leverages both government as well as non-government capabilities, including capabilities from private and philanthropic uh, actors as well as uh, um, federal agencies. And, and so you see they're highlighted some of the key areas that uh, the center has really uh, been looking to address through its development and so really helping track progress toward uh, meeting uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction targets, improving accessibility, usability and integration of greenhouse gas uh, data and information that is really trusted, um, as well as uh, helping really integrate that information and leverage also advanced models and data simulation systems to provide insights and improve estimates of greenhouse gas emissions and fluxes. And so all that being done within this uh, environment of fostering collaboration with interagency uh, partners uh, on the domestic side, and also looking at contributing to international efforts that are uh, happening in parallel. Um, we also heard and you will hear later today about the national federal strategy that has been in development and so the center is part of that broader strategy and it's looking to inform and support its implementation. Let's go to the next slide. So maybe a small font I'm realizing, so it's hard for me to see. So uh, the center is in this uh, two year initial demonstration phase. We've discussed our uh, initial implementing partners, but again, just want to highlight that we're really looking to follow an iterative approach that will allow the opportunity for other federal agencies and non-federal actors to contribute, both in terms of expertise as well as uh, of data and, and other capabilities. You see they highlighted some of the examples of agency capabilities that are serving as foundation to help uh, uh, prototype the center. And so you'll note uh, from NASA side, really satellite observations of greenhouse gases. Dr. Sensor main highlighted um, uh, spaceborne instruments like the emit instrument on board the ISS, highlighting satellite missions also like uh, the um, OCO2 and OCO3 that really help provide satellite observations of greenhouse gases in addition to modeling and data simulation capabilities that is really listed under this multi-agency bullet because again these are contributions from the different agencies um, uh, toward this effort. Um, EPA discussed uh, their role in, in um, 
uh, anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions and, and the reporting, both um, uh, in terms of tracking domestically as well as contributing to international reporting efforts. NOAA's contributions, including the Global Reference Network for Monitoring Greenhouse Gases, and that encompasses uh, uh, surface as well as uh, uh, shipboard, um, um, different types of balloon and urban observations, um, in addition to data and information services and provision of WMO calibration standards, and then NIST capabilities, including um, examples such as uh, their expertise and efforts in uh, monitoring urban emissions, and so including, for instance, the urban test beds, and we'll hear more about that later, as well as um, measurement um, science and technology supporting standards and standardization. Let's go to the next slide, please. And, and I guess the last thing I should mention is uh, cross-agency collaboration on urban campaigns as well, um, and um, calibration and validation efforts. So today, uh, following my presentation, you will hear from our colleague Deb Smith, you will see actually a demonstration of the Greenhouse Gas Center beta portal and what it looks today. And you may also hear about some of the additional features that we will be looking to develop in the months to come. And so what you will see is that we currently have a prototype data catalog, um, including an initial set of data sets that are of relevance to this initial focus areas that we're using to prototype the center in addition to capabilities including exploratory data analysis, a collaborative environment hub that actually helps scientists collaborate um, and um, use Jupyter uh, and Python notebooks to exchange uh, code and, and work on, on different types of workflows. And lastly, an interactive visual interface for storytelling and really sharing messages to different types of users and stakeholders. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, here, just uh, the listing of the 13 data sets that are currently available. Again, probably small fonts, so I will leave that up to Deb and the, the focus area teams uh, that will follow to actually share some of the relevant data sets features, featured on the, on the portal. One of the things that I want to highlight is that uh, these data sets have been um, included as some of these initial data sets. Uh, taking into account that many of them represent interagency collaboration in their production and also maintenance. Uh, in addition, these are data sets that are uh, peer reviewed. They, they have, uh, um, um, and, and therefore, you know, we, we want to make sure that they are vetted. And in addition, there are data sets that, uh, for which uh, uh, plant updates are available. And so these were just some of the criteria, in addition to their relevance to these focus areas that we've taken into account for integrating some of these data sets into the portal. Um, let's go to the next slide. slide. Um, focusing now a bit on the vision, mission, and purpose of the Greenhouse Gas Center. So its mission is to extend accessible and integrated data, greenhouse gas data and modeling capabilities from U.S. government and also non-public sources for scalable impact. And again, in, in the different sentences under purpose, you will see we're really highlighting user-driven, fostering collaboration with networks of interagency and international, intergovernmental and private sector partners, looking at promoting uh, innovation as well as transparency through open source science principles and establishing really knowledge transfer, so helping really engage and work across different types of users and get feedback on these initial capabilities to really help further the development of the center and define future um, uh, areas of, uh, of interest, the focus areas that the center should, uh, should uh, um, develop. Next slide, please. How the center's work is currently organized. So the center is managed out of NASA headquarters. Um, the implementing partners, we've discussed this, they're NASA, EPA, NOAA, and NIST, and there is this coordination mechanism, the Interagency Technical Expert Group. There are prototype capabilities that focus on these three initial use cases that you'll see in the next couple of slides, and um, those are part of this broader focus areas that we're using to prototype the center. And what we've done is we've identified agency subject matter experts from from each agency to, to work on these initial focus areas and, and um, coordinate alignment and ensure that agency capabilities are contributing to each one of those focus areas. 
Um, we are looking, as I mentioned earlier, to develop an approach to really help integrate additional capabilities and data from uh, non-public sector entities. And lastly, you'll be hearing later today that we'll have, uh, we're looking to develop these user focus groups. And so these are groups that would like to develop pair focus area um, to, to help really garner feedback and, and input from different types of users on these, uh, on these uh, areas. Next slide, please. So this is a schematic that we have used in the past, and it's, it's, it's great to be able to share it with all of you, but uh, aims to share what this system that we're building is about. And so you can see how different types of observations come together. So from satellites and other spaceborne instruments, ground-based observations, um, airborne, um, and are combined with uh, um, state-of-the-art models and data simulation systems to help really improve estimates of greenhouse gas emissions and fluxes. And then we're leveraging this uh, um, uh, coordinated data system to help um, provide them that information and allow re really for a multi-tier system that provides both a collaboration space for scientists and advanced users that can um, test bed new modeling approaches, look at uh, intercomparing and integration approaches, but also develop standards and processes for thorough evaluation of new measurements. And there is also a front-end system that really focuses on providing their more um, mature products that are ready for uh, public use and making these available in ways that can be more easy to visualize, to access, to analyze, while also providing, for instance, the ability to use GIS-enabled applications to, um, uh, to further then access, analyze, and, and, and um, develop these products into things that are needed for the particular user that is accessing this information. We're also looking to integrate and include feedback loops in this system so that information that we're getting from uh, the different types of users that are accessing this information can feed back into the system and help us improve and also prioritize new features, new data sets and information that is going in. And so lastly, you see the focus areas on the right hand side that we're using as initial areas to prototype the center. So let's let's go to the next slide. Um, and so these are the three focus areas that we will be hearing quite in detail about. And so as you can see, they focus on human emissions, natural sources and sinks, and then large emission events. And within each one of those focus areas, there is a subset or a more targeted use case that you'll also hear about today. We also recognize that each one of these areas has can contribute and is contributing already some of the information and the data or capabilities are contributing to international initiatives that are either already existing or in development. And so you see some of that highlighted um, in the areas below the, the boxes uh, that are included here. And lastly, another comment to make is that these focus areas really span local to regional and global scale. So again, we're looking really at addressing all these different scales and synthesizing that information as part of this Greenhouse Gas Center effort. If we go to the next slide. The next slide shows a bit more in detail the use cases in particular, and so these are improving access and latency to greeting of anthropogenic methane um, emissions, and so working very closely with EPA uh, to do that. And again, I'm not going to go into detail since you'll be hearing the details on these use cases and focus areas from the different teams uh, following this presentation. Second area and use case is complementing anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions with emissions from natural systems. Um, and for instance, wetlands. And then the last one is identifying and quantifying estimates from large methane leak events, leveraging different types of measurements, um, both spaceborne as well as airborne. Next slide, please. So a bit now on the stakeholder engagement. So we have been working, so you see at the top our implementing partner agencies and then different examples of stakeholders we have been in discussions with. And so those represent different types of government from the federal space to the state and local, as well as private sector. But you also see uh, bodies um, that um, intergovernmental bodies, international bodies. So you see, um, the UN, so UN Environment highlighted there, 
USGCLP, USGEO, in addition to um, uh, something like SEERS, the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites that brings together different space agencies from around the world. And you also see some examples of uh, uh, stakeholders that we're looking to target moving forward in terms of engagement. And so these are four of cities, like C40 cities, or um, the different state uh, fora, in addition to other examples that you see there. Again, these are representative examples. Let's go to the next slide. So in terms of the user focus groups, and you'll be seeing this again, I believe, in the different presentations that follow. So we are looking to start today uh, and so are asking for your interest as you'll be hearing about the different focus areas and use cases we're using to prototype the center. We're asking uh, people in the room online um, to express interest in signing up for one or more of these user focus groups. Again, the purpose here is to, to develop a two-way engagement where people can provide feedback on this initial capabilities included in the, in the center and also help us further develop these capabilities and, and, and expand uh, these focus areas. We are looking at existing and potential new users of the data sets and information incorporated in the center with, again, interest in one or more of these areas. And you can see the barcode there that can provide you the opportunity to sign up for that. So sign up today. Uh, and my last slide just highlights some of our and it's a busy slide, so highlight some of our uh, public facing milestones in 2024. I want to highlight, so we are on the kind of like on the on the left, uh, that uh, two orange boxes. So we have our targeted stakeholder forum today. We have uh, um, uh, you can go online and see the beta portal. So it, it is available online now. We have some events also happening next week. And so we'll be doing some additional rollout and releases next week. And then you see a number of events, both in terms of stakeholder engagement that is targeted uh, for engaging with states or engaging with the private sector and NGO. So we have planned some targeted meetings. Uh, in addition to participating in large scientific events like the American Geophysical Union, the European Geophysical Union, uh, contributing to uh, international efforts, including things that are organized through the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites or the World Meteorological Organization. And at the end of uh, 2024, or fiscal year 2024, we're planning um, toward the end of this prototype phase, we're planning a full portal release that will be showcasing the advancements in those initial use cases and focus areas, in addition to what we call a full demonstration capability stakeholder workshop. So something like this, but you know, augmented. And so we'll be looking to update this engagement. And the reason why I'm sharing it here is to just let you know what are some of our intentions about engaging in different types of meetings and also uh, developing some of this engagement uh, with uh, different types of users and stakeholders. Next slide. I think this is it. So thank you very much. You see here more information. Uh, you can follow the links, the barcode, and then you. I want to recognize the members of the Interagency Technical Expert Group. So thank you very much to everyone. I'm happy to take any questions later if we don't have time now. I don't see Shana, so yes, thank you very much.